Good afternoon. As you've been told, my name is Richard Fulford from the School of Management. I'm going to talk today about a study undertook into the Australian construction industry, with the outcome of which is this paper, Construction Industry Productivity at Studios Project Practice and Restriction Efficiency Improvement. It's under the review of the International Journal Project Management, which is the only era A journal. Subcontractors. And this means the subcontractors may be two or three tiers below the, the, the main contractor. In fact, in the Chevron project, there's 12 to, down to 12 like, levels of organisation involved between the work taking place and Chevron themselves. And that, this means, obviously, when this happens, that a great deal of that activity, in fact, over 90% of that activity, is lost to the industry when the product's, project is awarded. The competition is very cost focused. So each subcontractor is directed to keep the costs as low as possible. So each one of these three subcontractors that bid for one of the main contractors have to put in the lowest possible price. And also, these subcontractors identify the, pro the project pro and percentage complete procedures. So how they're going to manage the project and how they're going to measure the percentage complete of the work they've undertaken in the project. Okay, I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. There's manual review on site of work up complete where it means to say that the site manager goes out and looks at what's been completed to date and it becomes very adversarial. It was said that the subcontractor pushes up and the main contractor pushes down. There's lack or no see-through information between the actual project being delivered and the high-level organisation and there's many payment delays, delays through the chain of organisations. It's similar to the Tower of Babel, which I was going to explain when I've run out of time. I put together a group of project experts to try and understand why this is a process and I went to the Australian Institute of Project Management and formed this group of project experts um, and the background is obviously in the paper. One of the reasons they said they undertook this process was to minimise risk. So the main contractor doesn't want too many people on site, particularly because of peaks and troughs in the industry. And what this creates this focus on price-based competition and life cycle costing is not included. This is the ongoing cost of a project after the project's been delivered. The, the activity within the industry is restricted by the guarantees that these organisations can undertake for each additional project. And there's the low margins of these main contracts is misnomer because they've got very little capital employed. The, um, sorry, they've got very little capital employed, so the return on capital employed for these organisations is extremely high. And there's a lack of focus on the value add of these project activities. Okay, so this came to a number of conclusions. The construction industry would benefit from the stakeholder-led design process, where the stakeholders design the buildings. This is to include value engineering and life cycle costing. There should be more standardisation of information in the organisation and procedures, and more emphasis on the value-adding project management activity, rather than just passing information up and down the supply chain. 
The research is significant to theory and practice, and Craig Standard and I are following up an ARC grant with the APA group. Thank you very much. Thank you.